Hi, I'm Nancy J, and you are watching Texas Foodies. If you're a Texas foodie, you are going to definitely love this one because we're going to be talking to a man who has been cooking all his life for people who love food. Of course, that means all of us. So that means <laughs> all of us love Dean Faring, the master, the father of Southwest cuisine. I'm glad I'm not the grandfather. That I have seen, I, apparently there is a you grandfather. Know, it, I love father of Southwest <laughs> No, you cuisine. are the father of Southwest Cuisine. You've had that name for quite a while now, haven't you? It is definitely tattooed on my forehead somewhere, I'm sure. I'll tell you what, you have made most Texans into foodies just by what you have done in the kitchen. You know, developing a whole style of cuisine that I think fits Texas was <laughs> in a time I should say, that it was all French in Dallas, early 80s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming up with the uh, chilies and wild game and fish from the Gulf and all these great Texas meats and mm -hmm. putting them all onto a white tablecloth restaurant was new at that time. Well, let's go back to your Kentucky Roots. <laughs> yes. What were you eating in Kentucky as a child that brought you to where you are today? You know, it was very <laughs> country style food. And I had two great grandmothers from both sides of the family that could cook like the devil with salt and pepper, which changed the whole course of eating for me. So from Kentucky, I know you went to the Culinary Institute of America. Yes. So you obviously wanted to be a chef. At some I point. did. It, it, when I really started to turn the gears from, do I, did I want to be a musician or did I want to be a cook? I thought, well, eating might work. So you could always <laughs> eat in a kitchen. Sure can't eat if you're a starving musician all the time. <laughs> so, uh, so that always intrigued me, but I really started to get into the nuts and bolts, Nancy, of what cooking was past Southern cooking and past my father's Holiday Inn cooking and, you know, to the gourmet cooking, which at that time, that style of food was called gourmet. And it was all the classics. It was mainly French and Italian classics. And that's what I wanted to learn. So in 78, you came to Dallas. Came to Dallas with everything in my brown <laughs> Celica Fastback Toyota. <laughs> Celica, I haven't thought about. The coolest that. car I ever had. I, I wish I had it now. <laughs> so you landed a job at the Pyramid Room, Pyramid Room in the Fairmont yes. Hotel. Yes. Okay. And my chef, I was working at the La Maisonette, a famous, famous five-star mobile guide restaurant at the time after I graduated from the culinary and George Hayden the chef at the at the Masonette said listen I have a job for you in Dallas and my good friend who was Dieter Paul yes who was an icon of this town was the food and beverage director at the Fairmont <laughs> and he called George Hayden up and says I need a poissonier, a fish cook, for <laughs> our famous restaurant. And George Hayden said, listen, I love you to death, but you need a hotel experience on your resume. So I think you should go to Dallas. And straight I went. Well, so after the Fairmont, I know you went into, like, there was ag news, if people remember that, from the yes, early 80s. absolutely. And then finally, was it the mansion that really mansion changed came things back. for you? Well, after the Fairmont, I was saucier, the, the sauce cook, at the mansion when it opened up in July 80. And I stayed there and grew to be the executive sous chef under the chef. And then Tom Agnew and I, and Tom was the senior captain at the mansion at that time. <laughs> in 81, we left the mansion to open Agnew's, and that was the first white tablecloth American restaurant in this town, besides a burger joint or a barbecue joint or a diner. I mean, this was an upscale restaurant 
because all the other restaurants in 1981 were French and Italian. Mm -hmm. well, so where did tortilla soup, where did your tortilla soup come into play? <laughs> Actually, that's a funny story. I was in the back of the kitchen after lunch talking to Chef Chemin, who was the chef at the mansion at that time, and I was the uh, executive sous chef. And we were discussing something, and Mrs. Hunt comes in. Okay. And she has this scrabbled piece of paper, and she hands it to Christian, and she says, listen, we have so many international people coming to the mansion now, I think we should do a local flavored soup. And she had brought this soup up, and it was scribbled by the maitre d' from the Argyle Club in San Antonio. And she says, I want this soup on the menu so that we have a flavor of Texas. And this was long before I even thought about Southwest cuisine and doing those flavors of Texas. And she leaves, and Christian turns to me and says, I can't believe she's going to make me do a peasant soup. Peasant. Peasant soup. And then he handed me the recipe, and he says, you put this together. And that and you became... Is, is it the what? same stuff that now that we can buy your tortilla soup? I Absolutely. Mean, is it right the here same stuff that us. was in it? That's that it. you use. That's the broth. Now, you didn't leave out the secret ingredient. No, that's the real deal. Finally, you decided to use your own name. Yeah, Finally, exactly. right? And open up a restaurant. Well, John Golf, my partner, you know, we were, we were at a time at the mansion where, you know, I personally needed to do something different. And John came over and he says, would you like your own restaurant at the Ritz? And, you know, I think it was the quickest decision I ever made in my life. I just said yes. <laughs> so, and here we are 13 years later. 13 years. And still going strong, still loving every bit of it. How and many cookbooks now? How many? I three mean cookbooks altogether. This is the newest cookbook, which okay. is the Texas Food Bible. Ah. And a whole new product line that all stems from the restaurant. So what have we got here that we can find? I think we can also we can get this Central Market and online, right? Central Market and online, and we're talking to various other people right now, so hopefully you'll ah. find it in other stores. But we have a creamy basil dressing, and then we have a barbecue thousand island. I mean, I always look. I'm, I'm, that's and beautiful. That is a classic thousand island with oh. a great barbecue recipe added. Oh my gosh. And it gives and for burgers, only 70 for, calories. This oh, is a I good one. I love oh my that. God, this one only has 25 calories. People yeah, are going to want this D1. one. <laughs> Anything that, that, that has Dean involved with it, I, this is going to be yes, my new favorite. And then uh, a Texas oh, mop. Gosh. This is where you, would, you just mop it off the grill. <sighs> Whatever you're cooking salmon, pork chops, steaks. You have the best cheeseburger in the world. I've traveled the world and I try one everywhere I go. It's not on the main menu at Fearings. No, but you know you can always get it. Absolutely. So what you got to do, it's so much fun. You order it and people look and they're like, oh, I'll have what she's uh, having. Believe me, but, it, it starts a chain reaction. I mean, oh my gosh, it's wonderful. And off that mesquite grill, it's amazing. Thank you so much for being a part of Texas Foodies, this edition with Dean Faring. I'm Nancy Jay.